everybody. Today we're doing more hypothesis testing, this time for proportions. We're going to do it by looking at an example and getting at the big ideas that way. Here we are. A commentator claims that 30% of six-year-olds in the United States have a zinc deficiency. We'd like to evaluate this claim by collecting a sample and running a hypothesis test at level alpha equals 0.05. So we go out, we talk to 36 six-year-olds, and we find five with zinc deficiencies. So that's less than 30%. However, that could just be due to random chance. So we would like to know if the commentator's claim is true, just how unlikely is it to get a sample like this? That's our big idea. We're going to compare the p hat, the sample proportion that we got, that's that five out of 36, with the proportion claimed under that um, null hypothesis that what the commentator claimed was true. We'll call that P sub zero or P naught. So let's officially write down our hypotheses. The null hypothesis is that the population proportion is 30%, 0.30. The alternative hypothesis will be just that it is not 0.30. We have no reason in this problem to assume that the population proportion might be greater than 30% or less than 30%. We've got to take both into account. As usual, the two-sided alternative is our default option. We only go for a one-sided alternative if we have a specific reason to do so. Our p hat is going to be 5 out of 36, or 0.139. So obviously substantially less than 30%. But is that difference statistically significant? The way we're going to evaluate that question is by looking at the sampling distribution of p hat, of that sample proportion. So what we're doing here is imagining getting samples of this same size over and over and over again, computing a p hat every single time, the proportion of zinc deficiencies in that sample. Turns out that distribution is going to have a bell shape, assuming n is large. And I'll say a little bit more later about how large is large enough. Suffice it to say for right now that 36 is large enough in this case. Not only does p hat have a bell shape, we can specifically say what the center and spread of that bell curve are. The mean of the sample proportion p hat is going to be p, the population proportion, and the standard deviation of p hat is going to be the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. I derived that in my video on confidence intervals for proportions, so if you want a little more background on that, I encourage you to watch that video as well. So once we know that we have a bell shaped curve, we have a mean and a standard deviation, we can compute a z-score. We take the value we got minus the one we expected, p hat minus p naught, and we divide it by the standard deviation to get the z-score. Here p naught is of course referring to the population proportion assuming the null hypothesis is true. Now we just have to plug in values. p hat is 0.139, p naught is 0.30, we plug all those in, n equals 36, do a tiny bit of algebra, and we get z is negative 2.11. Of course, we're interested in the probability of getting a p hat at least as extreme as the one we got. To say that in terms of z scores, we need to know the probability of getting a z score at least as extreme as the one we got. In other words, less than negative 2.11 or greater than positive 2.11. So the way we're going to do that is to get the probability of getting a z score less than negative 2.11 and then doubling it. So that's normal CDF, uh, normal cumulative distribution function. So one way or another, I need to evaluate the normal CDF of negative 2.11. There are many web apps that can do that. I do it in R. The command there is pnorm of negative 2.11. And in this case, I get 0.017, blah, blah, blah. Of course, that's only half of the p value. I need to, the total area shaded there in that picture. The number that I've got, the 0.017, is just half of that, just one of the shaded areas. So I double it, I get a p-value of about 0.035. The cutoff alpha that we had chosen, the significance level, was 0.05. This p-value is less. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis and, can conclu and conclude that the commentator's claim is likely false. The proportion of six-year-olds in the U.S. that have zinc deficiencies is not actually 30%. Mm -hmm. One final point. When we were talking about the sampling distribution of p hat, we said that it was going to be approximately normal when n was large. And then we based all of our statistical inference on that normal distribution. So how large is large enough? What counts as large in this situation? Two rules of thumb to bear in mind. First of all, the normal approximation tends to work pretty well when the sample has at least five successes and five failures. 
to say that slightly mathematically, when np is greater than or equal to 5 and when n times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 5. If you don't have five successes and five failures in the sample, then the normal approximation isn't going to give you particularly accurate results, and you should use another technique. You need to take another math class, basically, to learn that stuff. The second thing to bear in mind, when you're talking about the central limit theorem generally and the sampling distribution of p hat in particular, larger sample sizes are better. The normal approximation gets more and more tight as the sample size increases.